What's going on you guys, Uncle Jesse here. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Nomad app, which is a recently released 3D sculpting app that's available for both iOS and Android devices. And I'm gonna be showing you how you can import an STL or OBJ file and then further adjust it so that you get the perfect fit before you run off and 3D print it. Let's check it out. All right, so let's try out something a little bit different here with this setup where I should be able to talk directly to you as well as show off here what I'm showing on my iPad screen. So the first thing we need to do is open up the Nomad app. Immediately what you'll see here is I've already preloaded in a 3D scan of my head. If you haven't already seen the video, I talk about how you can create a 3D scan of your head or other body parts using the Scandi Pro app on your iPhone. You'll find a link here in the corner. If you don't have an iPhone, you don't have that app, and you don't have a 3D scan, there is a link down below where you can find this exact same 3D scan that you can bring in here and work with for this uh, demonstration that we're gonna walk through here. So the first thing I wanna show you is just a really quick overview of some of the core navigation that's available here in the Nomad app. So on the left-hand side here, we're gonna have the brush size that you can adjust. So how large of a brush you're gonna be working with or how narrow. So you can adjust that slider to however you'd like to work and, and play around with that as you're going through this. The next one is the intensity. So as we're using some of the tools here, I can adjust how strong of a function it's going to be when I actually come in here. So here you can see very quickly that I can use some of the brush tools over on the right hand side of the page to start modifying the 3D file that I've imported into the application. So today, what we're really gonna be doing is focusing in on just a few of the basic functions here. So if I scroll down, we have a gizmo function, which is going to allow us to move 3D objects around in the space, a scale function, which is going to allow us to make them larger or smaller. And then we're going to be using the move function, which is going to allow us to click and drag certain points of a 3D file and manipulate it within this space. Uh, here you can see I was just playing around with the brush tool. And what's great about these 3D apps here, or other just 2D apps, on a tablet device is that you can use gesture control. So here I can double tap to start undoing the changes that I've made here. Or if I want to use three fingers, I can redo those changes if I've gone too far. So here I'll just undo all of those. I can also use my fingers to pan around, or excuse me, rotate around or two fingers to pinch and zoom, to zoom in, or two fingers to pan around the space. Really intuitive and easy to use, especially if you've used other 2D apps like Procreate here on the iPad. So the next thing I wanna do is just really show you here one other set of tools, which is along the bottom, which I'll be regularly using in this. So here I've, I've rotated around, and let's say I wanted to snap back to the front facing view. You can click on this little camera icon in the bottom, and it's gonna reset the view. So here it's just that front facing view that's reset for us, and now I can just zoom back in, etc. So let's say I'm now on the side view, and I wanna see the other side of my actual head here. So there is a flip view or snap view. So it's gonna to snap to the closest uh, side of your model that's available here. And if I click it again, it's gonna rotate around. So if I go to the top, it's gonna to snap again and make sure it's nicely aligned. If I click again, it's gonna go all the way to the bottom. Or if I slide this around to the front, it's gonna see here that I'm trying to do the front or the back view of of my model here. It's very, very intuitive, again, to use and work with. So the first thing that we really need to do here is actually bring in a model that we can start manipulating. And what I'm gonna do is come in here under this folder section, and this is where you can actually save your file or create a new file, a new project. What we wanna do is come under the import section and click add. I've already preloaded a file from Wexter here, his skull mask on my iPad. So you'll need to be able to import that in from a computer directly onto your iPad in order to do this or your, your Android tablet. So here we can see his skull mask that we're gonna be working with here today. And again, I'll have links down below to Wexter's file here where you can find that over on his Patreon. So the first thing that we need to do, as you can see here, it's offset from my actual head. So I'm gonna come over on the right hand side and we're gonna select the gizmo tool. And here I can start using the arrows to drag this into position so that it's more properly aligned with my face. So here I can use the red arrow to realign this here. I can drag this down. Uh, if I turn it sideways, let's zoom in a little bit better so you guys can see this. 
And I can start using these half circles here to further adjust and rotate the mask here so it's better fitting and lined up with my face. So here I'm just gonna continue to adjust this until it's relatively lined up with my face. So here I'm just gonna continue to play around with this until I've got it in a position that's pretty good for us to continue on with here. So uh, let me snap this in place and I'm gonna zoom back in and it's looking pretty good. But as you can see, the mask is way too big. If I just went off and straight printed this, it's not gonna fit my face very well. It's gonna be way too large for my face and I really want this to be more proportionately fit and like a snug fit to my face. So what we're gonna do next is talk about scaling. So here I'm gonna come on the right hand side and select the scale tool. And what we can do from here is I can use my finger or my pencil here to click on the model and click and drag. And if I go in one direction, it's gonna scale it up. If I click in the other direction, it's gonna scale it down. So here I just wanted to continue to scale this down until it seems about the size that I would like it here. I'm gonna go back to the gizmo tool and readjust the alignment of the mask now that we've rescaled it and it's a bit smaller. And again, it's looking much, much better now in terms of the size and proportions of this mask and how it would fit to my face. However, it's still not quite as proportionally you know, fit to my face. So what we're gonna do now is go on up to the move tool. So the move tool is gonna allow us to pick and choose certain areas of the mask and proportionally stretch those and move those around. One thing that I've made sure I've got enabled is symmetry. So here on the left-hand side of the screen is the symmetry function. So I've got it turned off. I can turn it on if it's, if it's in this blue color is how I have my UI set up. And what I can do is I can start coming in and clicking in areas and just dragging this around. And I can continue to play with this and manipulate the file to how I might want it. And as you can see here, it's actually stretching the model in these areas. So this again, isn't gonna work for everything that you're printing or trying to print. So if you have, let's say an Iron Man helmet and face mask, you probably wouldn't wanna use this method for rescaling it because it's gonna distort that helmet or the face mask and not quite look right when you go off and print it. But but for something like this, it's gonna work really well for us. So here I can come in and start again, further manipulating this how I might like it here. I could also use the other brushes and add more details to it or subtract details to this 3D file. So here from the nose, it might be a little too close to my nose here so I can adjust that. Maybe I wanna pull in the front a little bit. Uh, from the mouth here, it looks like it's sticking out a little bit too far from my face, so I can start adjusting that as well. And we can look at the chin here as well. Since I have symmetry on, as you can see here, as I adjust one side, it's automatically going to adjust the other side of the model as well. And so I'm just gonna continually move around the space and adjust the file as I see you know, the need to. And one thing else that you can do when you're manipulating the files like this is if you wanna get a better view of how this might be you know, closely resting against my 3D scan, I can come up here to this top menu and click on the little sun or light icon here, that's the shading function. I can adjust the opacity here of my file. So let's adjust that down to like 25 here and now I can see through and see my face and I can see, oh, I've got a lot of room here left with the mouth and chin area. So I can start tucking this in further if I'd like to really get this a bit closer to my face or adjusting the nose further and seeing how this might work against my face. And if you get a little too close, one thing that you'll be able to see is, it might be kind of hard to see in the video, but if I move in, you'll see here there's a, a difference in the shading between the file. So I wanna pay, try and pay attention to that so that I'm not overlapping my face with some of the adjustments that I'm making here and try and make sure that it's really you know, free from intersecting with my face model here that I don't necessarily want it to directly 
bleed through both of the files. So here I can adjust this back here to 100% opacity. And I think this is looking pretty good here. So what I've actually done is I want to show you another variation of this that I spent maybe, you know, 10 to 15 minutes on before making this video is the actual uh, printed version that I'm going to actually run off and, and print with. So here I can hide this again and let's go enable this other layer and we can do a quick comparison to see here's the file that I just adjusted with you guys here and then here is the file that I previously did, which is a good bit more form fitting to my face. I just spent, again, about 15 minutes of manipulating this file and now it's really nicely snug against my face. And the next step here is gonna be exporting this for 3D printing. So in order to export this file, all you need to do is come up in the top menu again to that folder. And instead of import, there's an export section. I'm making sure I have OBJ selected. And then there's an option here for export selection only. That means it's only going to export the file here that I have actively selected when it exports, not the entire scene that we're working with. So not the head scan plus the mask. So I'll select that and then click on the export to OBJ and I can pick and choose where I would like to export this to, whether I'm saving that directly on my iPad or here I can airdrop it like I've done previously and send it directly to my computer. That might differ slightly on Android devices, but you should have some sort of way to actually export it off of the device and send it to your computer. So let's get this 3D printed and we'll check out how it turned out. All right, here's my cleaned up 3D print. This was made off of the Epax E10. This is a new 4K mid-size resin 3D printer that Epax sent over to me. I'll be doing a full video covering the unboxing, my initial thoughts on the machine so far. Absolutely wonderful. I'm getting some really nice prints off of this machine. But yeah, here is the modified version of the skull mask from Wexter. If you're interested in grabbing this file, I'll have links down to his Patreon. I'll have also have links to the Nomad sculpting app that you can again download on your Android or iPad devices. I believe it's about 15 bucks and the creator of that is providing updates just about every two weeks to that application. And again, it's as close as you're gonna get to ZBrush on a mobile device. And yes, this fits perfectly. This is wild being able to go from an iPad and modifying it here very easily versus on my computer and trying to mess around with some of the other apps. It's just another option for me to work with. And I'm loving being able to incorporate some of these apps into my overall workflow. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think about Nomad Sculpt. If you'd like to see me do some more videos on the app, give some more overviews or how I'm potentially gonna be using this, I already have an idea in mind for another video talking about how I can make my own mask very easily using that app. So stay tuned for that one here. But I just wanna say thanks so much for watching. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters as well. Really, again, could not do this without your support. If you're interested in finding out more about my Patreon, you can find links down below. And speaking of Patreon, if you're interested in printing your own skull mask here by Wexter, I'll have links to his Patreon as well. Thanks so much for watching you guys, and I will see you next time. Bye now.